Oh, what's going on, everybody? It's your boy Chad Arms, aka Chetty Bobby. All in the Ooh, a little extended on that. Hello, nice. nice. little extendo maniac. <laughs> uh, hello, everyone. My name is Friday the uh, Tony, aka Friday the Fourteenth. And I'm Hot Mike Chance. Did you forget how to do it there for a second? It's yeah, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Look who we got back. And I am BJ the DJ. It has been a minute since BJ. It has been. Has it been WrestleMania since you've been back? Uh, no, no, last one we did was Nickelodeon. Okay, mm. Nickelodeon. He was, then here, I was, he was here about a month ago. Oh, okay. Yeah, Nickelodeon is the last one we did. Yeah, I'm way off. Who knew? Who knew? We're back. It's been a couple weeks since we've been filming. Obviously, yeah. we're dropping every week, but we pre-record these. Um, what episode number is this? This is 74. 74. Yes. Uh, That's crazy. This is actually a hundred, man. Got, uh, we've been a little busy of a schedule. You, uh, We're actually in time with the podcast this week. Yeah, yeah. this is. Um, we're shooting it tonight. I have to edit it tomorrow and upload it because it's coming out Thursday. Yeah. We're shooting this on a Tuesday night. Yeah. Nice. So we had uh, an eventful past weekend. You were in Taylorville, Illinois yeah. yep. at. Uh, what was it? What was the South Fork Mud Music Fest? Performed, uh-huh. killed it. Yeah, yeah, turned out good, man. We performed on Friday, and uh, Leroy performed on Saturday, and um, Demon Jones was the headliner on Thursday. Adam Calhoun headlined Friday, and then Upchurch headlined Saturday. It was really cool. Yeah, and nice. and like you said, you performed it. How many songs did you? Did you we did twenty minutes set. Oh hell yeah! yeah. It, from the videos that, that we've seen and everything, you you smashed it. Yeah, it turned out good, man. It was uh, it was awesome. There was several thousand people there, and it, uh, the reception was really good, and everybody everybody killed it, man. All the performances were dope. Jam Wayne's was awesome. He went right after me. That's awesome. Gotta love that guy. That was yeah. his second performance ever, and it was in front of like five thousand people. Nice. That's, that's, that's why I told him. I said, man, you're you're scratching. That's great. That's, you're not that's performing insane. in front of open mics in front of three artists and a sound man. Yeah, he said, dog. We used to perform in front of twelve people, and we were the twelve people. <laughs> <laughs> Facts. Yep. <laughs> and then we had uh, SummerSlam over yep. the week. We had mm-hmm. SummerSlam Saturday night. What, I think we've talked about this before, but what are y'all? What are y'all's feelings on the Saturday night PLEs now instead of pay per views? It's grown on me. I didn't like it at first because I, I'm more uh, traditional. Sunday style, night. Yeah, but I like it. Sometimes it's hard for me to catch it on Sunday yep. night. Yeah, you know, we have everything going on, getting ready for the next day to get back to work, like, and it's just Saturday's better. Most of your big UFCs. Or Saturday nights, your uh, your big boxing matches are Saturday nights. Yeah. So I think it gives it that that kind of more of a sporting feel. I agree. And yeah, and you don't have to worry about going to work and stuff the next day. That's what I like, I mean, especially the single night pay, uh, PLEs. Yeah, I keep wanting to say pay per views. It's pay per views. Yeah, but it's especially the single night. I'm a I've become a huge fan of the Saturday night events. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. But I mean, SummerSlam, one of the better pay per views of the year. I think it may right there with Mania. Mm. I think well. one of you guys had mentioned in the in the chat was it was a reset. Yep. Yeah, for that Mania. Was chance. And I think that was a good way of putting it. Like decisions were made, they changed the course on some of their things. But you also start seeing a picture of what's coming. Yeah, Ro- Royal Rumble, uh, Survivor Series possibly Royal Rumble, and then what what their plans for Mania next year will be. So. Mm. Yeah, I would like to get all five of us with Brandon too to do co- like a whole recap of SummerSlam, like yeah. we did a Mania. Yeah, that'll give me time to watch it. I watched yeah. like a recap, but I, I didn't get to watch the event. Match of the night to me was Logan Paul and LA Knight. Easily, I mean, um, they put on a clinic from t- uh, from I mean, the beginning LA- of the match to the end of it. And here's the thing about it. To be honest, I had to go back and rewatch it because when we were communicating during the during the event, I left during that match and then came back. I thought that Logan Paul had retained. I didn't yeah. know he had lost. Uh, and that's when, when I said at the end, I was like, "Wait a minute, he won." I said, "He needs a belt on him now." Logan, yeah. uh, La Knight does. Yeah. But I watched that backflip he did. Logan Paul did off the top yeah, rope. Incredible. Unbelievable. Man, I've been critical about him as a as a full time wrestler or even a part time wrestler, but he's been in the ring with. Like the big dogs, yeah, mm-hmm. and he's put on a show every time. And I was impressed with El- the one move that LA Knight did when he freaking pretty much box jumped from the mat to the yeah. top rope, yeah, and mm-hmm. did that b- super brain buster. Yeah, I was like, what the? Wait a second, yeah. this dude is two hundred and fifty pounds plus yeah. and just flat footed jumped onto the top rope. He's like it was- great, man. I, I think, and I think LA Knight, you're gonna see, right now. You've got Braun Breaker and you got LA Knight. To me, this is the Batista Cena type era, right? Yep. Next year, this time they'll be competing for like world titles. I feel like yeah. they're going to get a nice mid mid title run, and then they're going to start like strap the rocket to their backs. Mm-hmm. La Knight's been ready. Yeah, Braun Breaker, you could tell he's got some room to grow, but he's he's right there. Yeah. Nobody, nobody. I mean, just his physical abilities alone will, are enough to put him over the top. So. Yeah, yeah, it was a, a great pay per view from top to bottom. The 
I mean, Roman's Roman's back. Yeah, uh, as you know now, uh, looked great. Yeah, definitely uh, nice spot. And you got the tag title change on SmackDown, also. Yeah, uh, mm-hmm. you had um, the the Bloodline took the tag titles. Uh, I love everyone's talking about the the Jacob Fatu spot where he hit the table. Everyone's thinking he's hurt or whatever. Everything I've read says that was a planned spot. Yeah, and that he was supposed to be separated from Roman because they don't want them interacting right now. We'll see where that how that develops. Uh, but they got a lot of ways they can play this. He's supposed to be on SmackDown on Friday, so we'll see what yeah. what Roman has to say. I love the interaction with Cody because it was limited. It was almost like Roman telling Cody, "Like I'll see you, just not now." Yeah, I'll see yep. you soon. Yeah. And we'll I see. think that's going to be his defining – and we were talking about Cody's run as well. I think that's one of his defining feuds along with what they're going to try to build with Orton in the future. I oh, yeah, I agree. His, yeah, definitely. I agree. Well, uh, this episode tonight we're talking about – we're uh, going to get back into wrestling. Some wrestling – some of our favorite wrestling debuts. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, we're going to be discussing here this evening. Uh, who wants to start one off with one? Anybody? Anybody Chance. I'll, I'll start. I'll start with one of my favorites of all time. It's that's gotta be Kane. That's gotta be Kane. <laughs> it's a, yeah, Kane uh, debuting at Bad Blood in what was it? Nineteen ninety seven. Yeah, Hell in I, the Cell. I loved Kane, but what I hated about Kane is that Kane would show up and everything got dark and it got red and it was like they just started throwing Kane out there against anybody at that point. Like mm-hmm. I don't know why. Why are you going after Hardcore Holly? Like leave yeah. him alone. You know, fuck what I mean? Hardcore Holly. <laughs> 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 but that debut though was yeah. in, absolutely incredible. With the for him to be and with Paul Bearer controlling, especially controlling the fire out of the out of the ring post and everything. And he comes and just like rips the door off and yeah, then, rips the door off the hell in the cell and yeah. just uh, to have the Undertaker in a shocked look is saying something. Yep. Yeah. Um, and storytelling and, and all and um, that story was wild though. Yeah, <laughs> but it, yeah. Uh, but wasn't uh, the Undertaker uh, the original name for the Undertaker was Kane, Kane. the other Undertaker and everything. And I was so. watching a segment, so I'm going back and rewatching the Attitude Era, and there's a, there was a segment where they had Kane like catch a casket on fire on the top next yeah. to the Tron or whatever, and I was like, what are, what are they doing here? <laughs> Did he set his arm on fire in the episode <laughs> yeah. and everything too? Like, and everything? Yeah. But he's supposed That's to be wild. scared to death of fire yeah. and all <laughs> that, so he's always lighting them. But uh, Glenn Jacobs playing. Kane is just—I mean, it's epic. It's just going yeah. from Isaac Yankum to that to that role is saying something. Fake Diesel, mm-hmm. also. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, fake Diesel fake as well. Diesel also, yeah, Kane. Kane's debut was fire. Was that the first uh, Hell in the Cell as well? Yep. Yeah, yeah. that was so wasn't that was it? The, yeah. mm-hmm. That was the creation of the Hell in the Cell, which became—I mean, so many awesome matches came from the Hell in the Cell matches. But yeah, Kane's debut was was fire. It's probably my second favorite one on this list that we're gonna go through. Well, I'll, I'll, uh, go ahead. I'll talk about one. He's my favorite wrestler, and obviously he's on the table. Uh, Sting's WWE debut. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Uh, something I never thought would ever happen. Same I don't care. Here. Yeah, I didn't, and never in a million years. glad. And the way he debuted was perfect. Mm-hmm. It was absolutely perfect. And you yeah. can kind of see what was going to happen when he got there. Uh, you obviously knew something was going to happen with Triple H. But just showing up like that, helping the WWE guys take over the authority, was just a great way to debut. Yeah, because you thought uh, that's your Ziggler – uh, yep. Z- it was all down to Ziggler yep. and everything, and he pretty much beat. And then Sting came out, and I was just so disappointed with how the match result at Mania that year. Yeah, I don't feel Sting. like there was Triple Triple H had nothing to gain. Yeah, but he's mm-hmm. put he put over the Ultimate Warrior in eight seconds. Like you could have put over Sting. Like this guy's yeah. a legend. Triple H put him over. Be- that was before he had the reins, though. That's yeah, true. Very true. He was but doing I mean, he was doing what da- what what Pops told him to do. Like that, like. That, I agree. He, he said, that I was, crushed that everybody else in WCW. For the Go curtain curtain call. Yeah, that, yeah, that was right there, the, that uh, curtain call. I just, the Sting, I was so glad to finally see Sting. I just feel like it was six, seven years it too, was late. too late. Oh, yeah. without a doubt. Yeah. He wasted a lot of good years. He should have showed up. He wasted 06, a lot of good 07. years in TNA. Yeah. And yeah. after the main All event Mafia them. run in TNA, when Booker T came back at the Royal Rumble that year, and they try to bring in like Rampage Jackson for the main event Mafia. I felt like Sting should have left in and then mm-hmm. went to WWE. If Sting would have showed up in the Royal Rumble that year, that pop would have been crazy. I, they should. They should have. Sting should have waited out whatever. I don't know how long he was getting paid after WCW closed, but he. Should, they should. That should have been the top guy they went and got. Yeah, he went to W. He went to W. WC in Mexico in 2002. Like, what? Why did he go there? <laughs> well, because his contract was up. He went yeah. there with Jarrett and all of them, and then he went to TNA 2003 or 2004. That's what I'm saying. WWE should have done, done whatever, whatever they had to do. Oh, without yeah. a doubt. Because like that, 
I just feel like, and I like TNA, but I just feel like he wasted uh, his, twelve years of his career over there when he could have. Oh been. yeah, after uh, he had great matches with Samoa Joe, great matches with Angle. Angle versus anybody was great, but I mean, he had a good after that last main event Mafia run when they were trying to bring him back. He should have left. Now, when did he do like like the Joker Sting? That thing? was that was when the Hogan era. Of, okay, that was the Hogan era. Mm-hmm. No, the only thing that I wish they would have no, done. No, I hate that. I hate Hulk Hogan. That was the worst <laughs> era in TNA history. The worst. The only thing I wish they would have done with that debut, and obviously they couldn't because of the Owen Hart situation, but yeah. have them come down, down from the, the rafters. rafters. But yeah. And they could have used – they own the music. They own yep. his old music. Why they didn't let him ha- keep the same music? Like, they yeah. used it in the video game. It mm-hmm. didn't make any sense. A lot yeah. of it didn't. But yeah. I liked it when it – uh, was it right after Survivor Series when he came out from, like, uh, the Seth Rollins statue? Yes, that, that, that was memorial great. memorial statue that and everything. Great. Yeah, that was a good one, too. Yeah, that was great. Yep. Uh, I'll throw one out. I I was a big fan when Kevin Owens came out for the John Cena United States Open Challenge, yep. mm-hmm. and Kevin Owens debuted from NXT then, and then them two put on I think barn burners and yep. matches for like the next three pay per views, yep. uh, mm-hmm. going back and forth. And uh, yeah, Kevin Owens is just a stud. Still, he's to this a day. very underrated, yeah. underappreciated wrestler. Man, he yeah. is awesome. Yeah. Remember, Still remember, to this day, I remember back when. Um, that was around the time frame when WWE, like wrestling DVD collecting, was huge in the community, and we yeah we used to, 2015 was, yeah, yeah like 12 to 15 or so, and then I remember hearing about Kevin Owens, but it was Kevin Steen, it was yeah. ROH, yeah. and I, him and Generico, and which I mean Sammy was like I didn't know anything about any of them guys, but I started going and I started looking into them like the, just watching their matches, and then it was dope seeing him come over to WWE finally and. Like getting some light, but the, for the longest he was on that independent circuit, doing killing it, doing. kill it. Well, it even on. him and Sami Zayn's NXT matches when he won the belt from Sami Zayn yep. there and all that, fantastic. Mm. And then that's my favorite era of NXT. Yeah, mm-hmm. that, when that's that a great era. Was there, right there. That was my favorite era of NXT. But him, I mean, I think he brought out the best of Cena. Uh, he brought out a new life in Cena Without with a doubt. that whole. And that, uh, when Cena was doing that whole U.S. U.S. title open, open yeah. challenge. It was greatness. I'm excited to see night, Cena's uh, retirement tour. See how they push Cena for this retirement tour, this last year of his um, career. Which I mean, it had to happen sometime. I'm glad yeah. he's getting to go out that way. I don't necessarily know if I want to see him win a world title, but I mean, Intercontinental title would be great. Him and Braun Breaker could probably put on some really good matches. Him and a lot of people. Uh, Gunther, I feel like they could put on some good matches, um, but I'd like to maybe I'd like to see him in Orton at Mania. He's gonna have to get that that spot on the back of his yep. head filled in <laughs> before anything. Just, just cut his hair off. Oh, yeah, yeah that, just cut it off. Do, Stone yeah, cold. He don't need to come over. Do the military cut, yeah. something like that. I mean, just yeah. that that little bald spot on the back is not looking good right now. Jeremy. And if he does happen to win a belt, bring back the spinner just for a couple months. Let, yeah, just bring it back for a just couple do it. months. Is that right, spinners? <laughs> yeah. uh, <laughs> I guess I'll uh, I guess I'll go. My my favorite one on this list, and I know it's probably a weird one, but I, I always just I love the um, Big Show debuting at St. Valentine's yep. Day Massacre yes. '99. Yep, or greatness. Paul White Paul is what White. he was. Yep. Um, I thought that was fucking brilliant, yep. bro, because that was during the whole McMahon Austin mm-hmm. feud, and the way that they set it up, the way that they tried to fuck over Austin, and they ended up. Yep. He ended up winning because of them trying to fuck him over. Yep. I just thought that was dope as fuck. They, it looked like it wasn't staged. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, when and he comes out of that ring. He dude. looked, yeah, Paul yeah. White's just a, I mean, he's humongous. He's a he? beast, too. He straight up looked like Captain Insano coming out of the, out of the bottom <laughs> of that ring uh, yeah. from Waterboy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was a. Um, but no, it was, when, and throws Austin through the, the cage yeah. and all that. And it's just. You could argue that 1999, WWF 1999, was one of the best years in wrestling. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, market, yes. Yeah, the best it year, it's the best year for TV. WWE ever, I yeah. would say. Yeah. It was must-see TV every every Monday night, every pay-per-view. You yeah. had to tune in. Now, I wouldn't even say all of 99. I would say, like, six months of 98 and then six months of 99, like that 12-month The era frame. that you're talking about, I think, is the era that I'm currently in watching, re-watching mm-hmm. the Attitude Era. Because 98, early 98, that's when they're still trying to figure it out, and it's pretty rough, man. Yeah. Um, but when when Big Show and all them got over there in 99, and then early 2000, that's when all that's when Benoit and all them came over there, yeah. and Guerrero mm-hmm. and all them, Jericho. Um, but, yeah, 
that, that would probably be the, one of the best years, honestly. Speaking of, this is my favorite on this list, aside from the Sting, is Chris Jericho. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The yeah. countdown. Oh, yeah. That, yeah. August of 99. Yeah. If you yeah. go back and watch the, that pop, man. Oh, yeah. It, loudest thing I've ever heard in my entire life. He went toe-to-toe with The Rock his yeah. first first yeah. night out, man. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. that's that's yeah. saying that when they put and you he up had the a, best. And I, yeah. still, I still think Jericho's got to go down as one of the GOATs. What he's done yeah. in every different organization he's went to, um, and to rebrand can, himself every time. Every I can't time. believe WCW dropped the ball with him. Well, they like, didn't want to push. Well, you, mm-hmm. I mean, you look who they look who was ahead of yeah. him though. There was no way Jericho was ever going to get any higher in WCW yeah. than who he was. Yep. But yeah, that's one of that's that's my favorite on this list that we've got here. Uh, aside from Sting, that's yeah. what Jericho's my favorite. Well, yeah. one of my favorites is a more recent one is 2016. Even though the camera work on it at the Royal Rumble was not the greatest. Uh, AJ Styles when he did, he came out and mm-hmm. I think what number three, uh, number three or number without four, a doubt yeah Royal Rumble we saw that we watched that live yeah. on YouTube yeah. Didn't we? Yeah. yeah yeah we were watching that I think we were live streaming that night and on the Chatty Bobby channel yeah uh, I'm pretty sure but it was huge yeah I mean I, it's another one of those it's you never thought you'd see AJ Styles, AJ Styles, Styles coming tr- over in the WWE I'm trying to remember if we thought if we knew that going in that was going to happen I don't think we did I don't uh, think it at the complete surprise I don't think mm-hmm. there was any leakers or, he was a free agent I think he was a free thought. agent and everybody, once he got kicked out of the Bullet Club in New Japan yep. that's when everybody was like okay mm-hmm. he uh, something something's going about back to happen TNA everyone thought he was going back to TNA but yeah, yeah and then but once his music hit but like I said they got the the camera work wasn't the greatest because no. they fucked up with the camera they had it on Roman yeah mm-hmm. When he walked out, and because I don't like, think anybody knew the music or anything. No, this no, was completely no, new. Was, nobody knew what that was until they saw the, showed the screen phenomenal. and AJ yeah. walked out. Yeah, and I was like, but yeah, it was that's a huge moment right there. I mean, I've always been an AJ Styles fan. Yeah, uh, definitely. And I mean, the rest is history. As soon as he came in, he made he made a Instantly. huge impact. To think about how many guys have gone to WWE and been able to keep their name and personality and everything about them. They WWE didn't water him down at all. They let him come in and be yeah, AJ be Styles. He, yep. Yeah, be like, yeah. even and I'm his sure style that's, and every, like the way he looked. And absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I'm sure that was a huge part of him signing. Was oh, like, hey, I'm I, I'm coming in my way. And he's another one whose time is – he's he's almost done. Like, yeah. he's ready to wrap it up. I mean, he's up. done it all. Yeah. I mean, you, There's I nothing mean, else for him to do. Yeah. He's literally done it all in the professional wrestling. I think we had, we had this stat with Cody. I think there's, what, three or four guys that have won the NWA title, the WWE title. New Japan. It was, it was Cody. It was AJ Styles. It was Ric Flair. And I think – and maybe it was, like, Bruno or somebody like that. It was a short list of guys who had won the NWA title – in the WWE title. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, one for me is, we talked about him a little bit earlier with Jericho, but Rocky Maivia. Oh, yeah, Survivor That's Series. Blue chipper right yeah. there. <laughs> 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 Talk <laughs> about turning it around. <laughs> Damn, hey, it, that, that attire, bro. Yeah. I don't yeah, know what was going on his there. arms, man. Mm-hmm. Like, of course. He had, had the worst gimmick. Constantly smiling. Yeah. He had the worst gimmick ever. Yeah, I don't know yeah, what they were be. thinking. It's like, yeah, mm. <laughs> but they, the greatest thing that happened to his career, though, is going to the Nation of Domination That's it. and mm-hmm. putting him with Farouk. I never understood why they put Owen Hart in the Nation of Domination. That's it had to have been a rib. It yeah. had to have been a rib. Yep. Because, and this is another thing that makes me think the Montreal Screwdriver is a work. Oh, boy. Owen could have done anything, could have went anywhere and done anything, but they allowed him to put him in the Nation. He didn't even fit the mold. Obviously, he stands out more than the other guys, right? Yep. But that's another reason why I think the Montreal screw job was a work because he said, "No, I'm gonna go over here and do this, make this little money." Yeah, could easily just walked, you mm-hmm. know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, nope, it's a work. <laughs> <laughs> it's a work. <laughs> Not buying it. Can't <sighs> do it. Nope. Um, Goldberg. Oh okay. yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's oh, pretty epic. Uh, Epic debut. It was a Hugh what Morris a run? Because he started off in the ring as a jobber. He was in the ring, and Hugh Morris got the entrance for that. Like that's what was great about it. He was standing in the ring, not saying a word, with his arms crossed in the corner, and Hugh Morris got the intro. And then Goldberg squashes him. And then the rest is history. And the rest and is the history. Run, yeah. The run, uh, just that first spear, and then the jackhammer, and yeah, and then their epic run of the U.S. title, and yep. then upsetting Hogan on that Monday night in Atlanta, yep. where. One of the biggest pops ever in oh, wrestling. Oh, yeah, without a doubt. And I loved his WWE debut also. The ring, the, the Rock was in the ring. He said, uh, I've, The Rock has done it all. The Rock has done it all. Yep. Who's next? And then all of a sudden you hear the music. Everyone goes nuts. Goldberg walks out. He's wearing the Harley jacket. Uh, and then he gets in the ring, and he goes, Guess what, Rock? You're next. And he spears the Rock. And it's and, great and sells it like a uh, like a yep. 
a good car salesman. Definitely did I, not, I had yeah. no good comparison on that one. I was yeah. failing hard. I liked his I liked his run in WWE the first go round. I thought he did well. I know it was short, but I mean, what? what did I didn't he watch much of it at that time. Oh three. Yeah, it was a good year. It's mm. pretty. It's going back to the 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 first debut from Goldberg. Like you got to think. June of 96 is the birth of Stone Cold Steve Austin. Yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. November of 96 is the debut of Rocky Maivia. Yep. And September of 97 is the debut of Goldberg. Yeah. That's wild. Well, and then you got two more right in between there, too. You got Scott Hall and Kevin Nash in May and June yep. of 96 making their debuts yeah. in WCW. Yeah. That is probably one of the most, when we talk about wrestling, the most iconic debuts yep. ever. Because it was completely unexpected. With the Scott Hall. Scott one? Hall. Oh, yeah, yeah, we've talked. Yeah, we've mm-hmm. talked about it numerous times. When he comes, you're nothing there flashy thinking, about it. Yeah. Just realistic. That's the that same thing with Goldberg. His was like not, you know, WWE goes to elaborate things for debuts and stuff a lot of times, but like WCW tried to keep it as real. Yep. Yeah. 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 And, and, and simple as possible. And same with Kevin Nash. His wasn't near as epic as as. Razors was, but it was still dope. Like, yeah, and I, and I didn't know that they were leaving. Like I didn't have no idea or internet any of that. No, 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 no. So whenever you see them showing up, you just saw them on. Well, mean you know, Gene damn sure wasn't going to tell you. Yeah. <laughs> 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 mean Gene was telling you a bunch of whole bunch He's of fucking off on that rubbish. Line. Yeah, I love but yeah, that whole the whole Bischoff thing where Scott Hall's like, yeah, and then turns yeah. around and there's freaking big sexy. Yeah, that was. Uh, yeah, I, I agree with what what Chad said. I don't think that uh, Kevin Nash's was near as iconic as what Scott yeah. no, Hall's no, was. No, no, no. Scott Hall's is probably one of the tops ever. Just coming out in of the, the middle States. of a match, just in the middle of two jobbers wrestling. But yeah. I love that time period, man. Like when when the internet wasn't giving away everything. Like yeah. Luger showing up on Nitro, the first the internet episode ruined of Nitro. So much stuff. It ruined it ru- it almost ruined pro wrestling. Like you oh, saw yeah. you started yeah. seeing scripts yeah. leaking of like what was yeah. going on. But like Luger shows up on the debut episode of Nitro uh and he had just wrestled the night before in yeah. WWE. Nobody knew. Yep. Yeah. Um who's next? What you got? You got one chance? You know? Um one another surprising one for me was the Nexus. Because I didn't even see them, you know, being a group or, or – I mean, I think that was a good idea, having them come together and, and – They wrecked come, shit, too. Yeah. yeah. That was an awesome day. Well, they come, and Daniel Bryan. Right off of Tough Enough, like one of the first seasons of Tough Enough mm, yep. and everything. Yep. yep. And then yep. Daniel Bryan lost his job because of it because he choked <laughs> Sam Roberts with, uh, <laughs> with his tie. Oh, Justin after, Roberts? Yeah, Justin Roberts, yeah. 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 After I wonder the, if they uh, made up. I wonder if they're cool now. Oh, yeah, they got to be. <laughs> After and that but was after the Chris Benoit stuff, I think. So they yeah, that's when they destroyed Cena in the middle of the yep. ring and everything. And they they tore up everything. Yeah, and, and that was dope. And I wasn't watching it then. I watched it because that was so oh eight oh nine. We watched it. That's when we was me and Brandon had that place out in uh, the country that we used to come over and watch wrestling with us. But then like two thousand ten eleven, I didn't really watch it much. Mm-hmm. And then I started back watching it in like twenty twelve. So the ten and eleven, I didn't really watch until way later. I yeah. would watch, yeah. you know. But the next, so I didn't know about Nexus when it actually happened. I went back and saw it, but mm-hmm. yeah, that was dope. And a lot of those star, you know, a lot of those guys became stars in WWE. Yep, a bunch of them. I mean, and that Husky Harris, stuff. R.I.P. Yeah, Brady, yeah. Uh, uh, Wade Barrett. Wasn't Wade he? Barrett, uh, Wade Barrett Bryan. was like the leader. Wade was of, the main guy. Mm-hmm. Curtis yeah. Axel was in there too. Yeah, yeah. Ryback. Yep. Ryback. Yep. 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 That's yeah, your boy in it. Right? Yeah, yeah, Ryback. He had, he had a good run. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, yeah. Ryback yeah. just, he just, he's just a Twitter personality now, ain't he? And he's making bank on TikTok. You know, doing he? what? Yeah, doing live live battles and stuff. Getting live, what's, he's what's making, he battling? I bet he's making more money now than he was <laughs> in his wrestling. What's career. he battling though? <laughs> demons. That's crazy. He's battling it's crazy. demons. Other people. <laughs> Do it. What he's are getting, they? He's getting gifts. You just battle each other and was it a quiz off or something? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no, you just say who can give you more stuff. Yeah, so that's all no, you do. That's all it is. Yep. Hmm. What really? are we doing with our such lives? and such? Donated an ice cream for ten dollars. <laughs> uh, ice cream emoji. Hell yeah. <laughs> you make a bunch of ice cream. I'm like, what is going on on the internet? <laughs> what? <laughs> is that not what they do, bro? I'm not saying that's Some, what he does. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Some, well, that's yeah. what a lot of people do. do and yeah. Oh, is it? oh, yeah. It's oh. like non playable character NPC. They're like, oh, oh ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> hold, on, hold on. Cut that out. No, <laughs> no that's staying in. Oh, wow. <laughs> leaving it. We're leaving it in. That's, that's <laughs> definitely staying in. <laughs> oh, Lord. A whole bunch of poppycock, if you have <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, I got uh, the white. A glizzy. A glizzy. <laughs> Where's a hot dog at? I'll take a hot dog. Clearly. Uh, the Wyatt family when they uh, the, when they debuted in 2013. Great build up to that too. Yeah. yeah. Um the whole yeah, it's it was like a horror movie lead yeah. up and everything to it. 
The vignettes, um, man, for the Wyatt family were unbelievable. Yeah. And the music fits so well, too. The music yeah. he came out to. Yep. They had the look. They had a good run. They, it, was yeah. just the, it was just the perfect storm for all them. This Wyatt Six made an impact when they showed up, too. Like, uh, that I'm, was, I'm digging it. I'm that digging it. That was an awesome debut as that's, well. That's heading off the cliff real fast. It, you may be right. You may be right. It may not last till WrestleMania, but they it made an impact on day one. They should have had them come in against someone other than – Chad, Chad Gable because they yeah. killed Chad, killed yeah. his push. Chad was sitting there talking about, uh, "I'm the next Intercontinental Champion," and everyone was mad that he didn't compete for the Intercontinental Title at WrestleMania, and they just killed that all. Not yep. so fast, my friend. In the lead, <laughs> words of Lee Corso, not so fast, yeah, nah. my friend. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to figure out how in the hell it's been four months since WrestleMania. I know. Yeah, yeah it, it's, it's, it's insane. We're uh, it, it, we're what two weeks that, away right. from football season yeah. starting. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so here's the thing. Uh, I know we're getting. We've only got a few more of these left, but I'm just going to say it now. I am beyond addicted to EA Sports football, uh, college football. Really? Mm-hmm. Are you? I cannot stop playing. Is it, oh, the wow. great, is it the, one of the it's greatest the, sports games ever it's, made? It's, yeah, it's the best. Is that – you got Xbox, right? Yeah. Is it cross-platform? I don't know if it I is or not. I think so. I don't know, I don't know how be. that works. It it is, really is. If it is, we need to I, run the game. Play. Oh, have you got it? I can't mm-hmm. stop playing it, bro. It's 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 so fun, dude. And, and what, what are you playing on there? Like, is there a certain mode? You're I play. Playing I play or? Dynasty because yeah. you just build, I, t- I got Vanderbilt yep. and I start. Like, you build a team and then, like, you like the recruiting thing. A part the of recruiting it? is awesome. Like oh, wow. you get job offers at the end of the year to where they're like, uh, you know, you go Northwestern invited you to, or, or, uh, is offering you to be a head coach, and you can switch teams if you want. Now, are you actually playing? I haven't played it yet. Are you actually playing the games? Like you're recruiting, you're building your team, and you're actually going in and playing, or well, is I play it simulated? Every, no, I, I usually I just play offense only. I don't okay. I don't play defense as much. I just like playing offense. But you can go in there and change. You can just play certain moments. You can play the whole game. You can yeah. play just offense or defense. It looks uh-huh. incredible graphics-wise. Mm-hmm. I check oh, it out. It looked yeah, like the flow of it. It's it's, so it looks very smooth. All now, the stadiums are realistic. All the players' names are on there. My like, favorite thing is the stadium noise, and then yeah, it messes yeah. up your routes dude, and stuff. You do not even try to kick <laughs> a field goal if you're, if, you're going, <laughs> if you're playing somebody like Michigan or Tennessee or something and you're on the road, yep. don't even do t- not even try to kick a field goal. Michigan <laughs> cheats. Michigan <laughs> cheats. The, the screen is – I mean, there's no way. You can I heard like the Penn State stuff, like the whiteout for like Penn State. It's a fun, uh, it's a fun one to watch and everything. Probably I hadn't played Penn State yet, but I've I've played with a, a few different teams. But I, but it gets it right, like the yeah. atmospheres and everything. The recruiting thing is so dope, though. It's so detailed. I'm about to get it. Yeah, it's it's dope. I'm gonna have yeah. to upgrade a system. Since we're talking debuts, that's that was the debut. Well, had, get yeah, you a PS5, man. Yeah, I need to. Go ahead. Everyone else got one. I know, right? They're, yeah, they're, well, you can find them now. My son got one for his birthday, which means we got one for his birthday. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah. But uh, is it is it uh, now? I'm staying on it. Yeah. <laughs> um, now compared to like when a Madden drops, is this one like far advanced, like playing wise? Because I know there's always usually glitches with Madden and I, stuff. The, the only the only glitch that I've seen, and I don't even know if it's a glitch. It's almost kind of funny. Like when you go after the first year when you're recruiting, some of the names are like. Hilarious, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I think it's just because it's AI generated. Yeah, gotcha. You know what I'm saying? Like it'll be like a dude from Texas you're recruiting. His name's Ben Dover or something. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 yeah, yeah, like, but it's, it's like, so. It, I don't. I think that's just them EA being funny. Yeah, but uh, you can go in and edit all the names. See, that as was, far as the gameplay, it's bro. It, it's Madden is a broken game every year when it first comes out. Yeah, and it's a, the same game EA, every year. Too. It is yeah. the same game. NCAA is not at all. And there was a deal going where you, for 150. You can get the deluxe editions of both games. I didn't even pre-order Madden. I'll get it, but I'm not in no hurry because no. I'm going to play that. And like, you can transfer your, your player over, yeah, too. Yeah, I don't know if you nice. can transfer your coach or not, but nice. you can your player. The only thing that sucks is that you can't really customize your – like when you have when you make your coach, there's not really customize. much. You can yeah. change the way his head is and like his size, but you can't change his attire much. Yeah. That yeah. may be something you can earn later, but they keep it pretty basic with that. But everything else is – I remember Chad was the only person I knew that played the NCAA 2K for a long time. Dude, I love we mm-hmm. we had a league going at, in our old house and stuff. Yeah. I, I love the playing uh, the dynasty for just for the recruiting part of it. Mm-hmm. I'll do it. Uh, taking a yeah. low level team, and I'm like I'm out recruiting like the big boys and stuff. Bro, I played like three seasons with fucking who did I play with uh, Sam Madison or something? <laughs> they were terrible. <laughs> I was just trying to turn them around. Yeah, you know? but the only thing that sucks is when you play with a team like that. Not only can you not really get good recruits, like every, at the end of each year, it'll so, show you a list of who's transferring. And a lot of your best players transfer because they're not getting enough looks at the mm-hmm. small school. Yeah. So it's like you have to try to convince them to stay. 
It's See, fucking like, dope, bro. Yeah, that's it's why I really like going good, into man. detail with like that kind of stuff. It's like, oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, it just proves I mean, that Madden. It just proves that EA doesn't give a fuck about Madden because they don't try. Yep. Yeah. Because that's EA's game, and it's leaps and bounds. It's so detailed, and there's 130 teams on there. It's you know crazy. I've lost it's interest so in 2K24. I've lost WWE. I've lost yeah, interest in it. I lost it too. Mm-hmm. Because it was cool, but it I was got it. the my faction stuff. Oh yeah, all that. Stuff. It's just there, why do I need five different versions of Cena and like yeah. why do I need that? Yeah. You don't want the Pat McAfee d- deal? No, I, I hadn't even bought that. I bought the ECW pack and I bought the um, the Nightmare pack. That's what I did. But yep. I was like, I just like I, I don't, don't even need. play it. Like I'm gonna, I can't yeah. get Lesnar, but I can get five different versions of Cena. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, yeah. I got three versions of Hogan. I don't even want one version of Hogan on the game. <laughs> Speaking of McAfee, he was brilliant on on the oh, SummerSlam yeah. broadcast too. Yeah, him and yeah. what Dude. I loved about look Dominic Mysterio, they were like, "You two timing son of a bitch." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's a dead, oh, dirty dumb. Yeah, he great. despises. Oh. They're gonna have a match at some point. Him I love and Dominic it. Are. I think it's. I think it'll be great. It, it's gonna happen. But yeah, yeah it's. I, it'll you, be. It'll be a step up from him wrestling Rey Mysterio every two weeks. What do you think of Cole going to SmackDown? Hey, I don't know who that guy is that's what, replacing Joe him. But, yeah, but Joe Testa. He Joe he seems Joe like he's Testa. gonna be too polished. I think. Yeah, uh, the name sounds familiar. Who's he gonna something. work with, Graves? Probably. No, I think uh, uh, Cole. Or Pat McAfee. Is Pat McAfee, he's still going to be on He's going to be on Raw. So I guess it's going to be okay. Testator and McAfee. Okay. And then Corey and uh, Michael oh, uh, and Cole go. on. I don't know if that guy's that new guy, if he's uh, a ESPN guy or what. I think he may be because that name sounds so familiar. I don't. I didn't, I didn't realize but Michael I Cole really had been like around him. for as long as he's been around. Yeah. Like yeah. he was the second chair on during the Attitude Era, and I, I completely forgot about that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's been around for a while. 30, like 30, 35 years probably. That's like wild. 96, yeah. 95. Oh. The, and the camber work was phenomenal again. Oh, yeah, they're getting they're, they're getting really good with that, yeah. trying so, different stuff. Speaking of one of the names on here, the, the list on here, I, I'm we got Mankind's debut. Yep. Yes. Oh, yeah. But yeah. it says 99. That can't be right. He was he came in before that. I think, was it 96 that he it came in? It had to in? have been 96, yeah, because he, he, he did Boiler Room Brawl and all that with Taylor. Yeah, and yeah. Then, so, but, but, yeah. His, but his debut, yeah, debut. I think it should. I think it is ninety six. That sounds. That sounds more right. Yeah. Because the Boiler Room Brawl was ninety six or not. Yeah. Yeah. Ninety seven. Well, he was in. Yeah, because he was yeah. in ECW April, in ninety five. April, April Fool's, Fool's, Fool's Day, Day of nineteen ninety six. Okay. Yeah, I just got the. I yeah, got so, the. Three, yeah. I was three years off on the day. So, so I added on my list on when they mentioned Mankind, which I thought was really dope. How he came in. Everyone knew, of course, it was. Foley, but uh, I, I had no idea it was Foley when when he debuted and everything. Yeah. Really? No, yep. I didn't. I did. and especially when he was like pulling his own. Yeah, Dude, that build up was awesome. Yeah, to, to his too. his music was crazy too because it mm-hmm. was like the most peaceful type of music ever when he first came in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I put on here Cactus Jack. Uh, when Cactus Jack debuted against Triple H at Madison Square Garden, when yeah, he did the yeah. interview, they're sitting there with Dude Love. And uh, they're sitting there with mankind, and they're going back and forth. And then all of a sudden, he goes, "There's one more person I know that would love to get a piece of Triple H, Cactus Jack." And he comes out, and bang, 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 you bang. know. I thought that was great how they brought him in. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, another epic one, one of the most epic one, Brock Lesnar. Oh yeah, it, yeah. Oh yeah, dude, when he popped out in 2002 and just destroyed everybody in the ring. Yeah, is that the one when they did? Is that Spike the Hardy Dudley. Boys one? Yeah, and Spike wasn't the Spike Dudley. Bruh, the, the 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 spot where he gets in there with the Hardy Boys. I don't know if that was his debut. I can't remember. And they hit him square with in the, the face. Cha- with the chair, chair yeah. shot. He didn't move. Didn't face him. <laughs> that was the crazy. That's one of the craziest things I've seen in 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 WWE history. Oh, the way yeah. he got hit, and that just shows how they used to hit each other with him. Oh, they were oh, swinging dude. chairs oh, yeah. back then. Oh, now they barely hit him on the back. I mean, like that there's shit. a scene of Hogan barely hitting somebody with a chair, and it's the worst chair yeah. shot I ever saw in my life. Uh, well, Randy Orton made the mistake of uh, scraping Taker's face with a chair that yeah. one time. But no, yeah, uh, I think it was Spike Dudley uh, when he power bombed Spike That's Dudley. That's right, he came the, out of the crowd. Yeah, and Spike yeah. and uh, Poor Heyman Spike. was just. Going crazy and yeah, dude, Spike went, took those power bombs. Poor Spike, that's what it was. Through the trash cans and everything. Oh, that was so brutal. But yeah, it was so. He just made it was a presence yeah. when he debuted. Oh, he's a hoss. He was huge back then yeah. too. The guy had no neck. No, he was in in scary. Yeah, scary yeah. dude. One that's not on that list that you have right there in front of you that I have on my list here is Kurt Angle's TNA uh, yeah. in ring segment. Yeah. They they showed him the week before on the Tron. Uh, and he said, you know, it's real, it's damn real. But the next week, he's in the ring with uh, Samoa Joe, and he headbutts Samoa Joe. And that built up their feud or whatever. So, But, yeah, that was one of my favorites. That's what really what made me switch and start watching TNA Yeah, was Angle. 
And I guess um, I think we've talked about everything on this list except for one, and it's it may be the debut of all debuts, Undertaker. Oh yeah. Oh uh, yeah. Oh yeah. The ninety is it? Ninety. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, ninety Survivor Series. Yeah, when he walks out with uh, uh, Brother Love. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Who would have thought he would be who he was? Like the uh, back yep. then, I wasn't yeah, thinking he was going to be as great as he he was. And no, now he's because, now he's on Logan Paul's podcast. He's on Impulsive. I he's love the, the fact that he's. I, I just love the fact that he's got a lot of personality now, and that he's yeah, doing he's these. able to separate. The, and like he's, uh, I think uh, I've watched about half of that episode. He's he's at a point now where he where he's not in the ring and ever he can separate. Yeah. Mark Callis and the Undertaker. I love that, dude. Shout out. And this is a sidebar. This is related to Undertaker. Shout out to my dog Jeff McCool. He's from a group called Moxon Creek, legendary country rap group, right? Mm-hmm. He is the older brother of Taker's wife. Oh, nice. Oh, Michelle, Michelle McCool. McCool. Michelle McCool. Nice. Holy cow. He was talking to us the other day about it and uh, said that he always gives her shit because, like, <laughs> if he sit, when he would see stuff on or hear stuff about them, too, he's like, that's my sister, man. That's my sister. You know? Yeah. But he's, I mean, that's, that's, like, a, that's, that's his crazy. brother-in-law. Yeah. <laughs> that's insane. Yeah, he was, tell, he was talking about that. I said, man, that's got to be crazy. He said, oh, yeah, it's, you know. I Freak, thought that was me. Cool. Mark Callis as your brother-in-law. Yeah. Freaking the Undertaker as your brother-in-law. Yeah, he said he's cool as a motherfucker. Man. Oh yeah. Cool shit, yeah. Have you have you watched any? I know his his YouTube channel is mainly. You I just pay see for whatever it. clips are on YouTube mm-hmm. occasionally. Um, but it's I, so cool to get this side of him. Yeah. And everything. Him and Maven, they did a podcast together. I love Maven's podcast. And it was I love awesome. Maven. Yep. Okay. Maven will show his royalty statements and everything, oh, yeah. and his checks. And <laughs> I love it. I think it's great. Expose the business. One thing we didn't talk about when we were doing our SummerSlam recap, we didn't even talk about Jelly's Choke Slam. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Sell of the Epic. year right But that's there. like one of the that's best choke slams debut. in the yeah. history. Yeah. Right? That's an in-ring, yeah, yeah. in-ring debut. And it was one-handed. That was the I best know. part. I mean, that's better than Taker. Uh, well, he did meet Taker backstage, so I'm guessing he Probably gets got a little point. Yeah. yeah. And they and hit the five-knuckle shuffle. Like. Yeah. Dude, insane. Jelly Bro, was – Jelly looked – I mean, Jelly – Came up off that mat like it wasn't shit. Yeah, yeah. Dude, yeah. he was all over that pay per view. Uh, yeah. Pay per view. Yeah. I'm saying it. Pay per view. He was, he all, was over all over it. it. Yeah, shout out. To he was Jelly front man. and what's his manager's name? Uh, Jonathan. Yeah, uh, and everything. He I saw him a couple times right there, yep. ringside, right there on the corner, and everything. Shout even had to spot Jelly. him. Well, and Jelly invited me to come with him to SummerSlam, and we, we had that show in Taylorville. I was so hyped, and yeah. then I, I found out what day it was. I was like, fuck. <laughs> Yeah, them MG, uh, MGK just just yeah. all hanging out, just involving themselves in the matches. But this is this is how you know WWE is really up on what's going on in this world, this day and age. Because while they're being seated next to the ring, and they have the shot where they show them where they're in the ring and they're jawing with Jelly, saying, you know, his music's trash or whatever. Lonely Road was the number one song in the country at the time. Yeah, yeah. and here they are on that on television together. Like at perfect timing, like they it's knew. Insane. WWE knows that stuff. Man. It's, a, it's saying yeah. "Amazing Grace," the lead off. Uh, yeah, yep. it was just kudos. Yeah, he to I thought that's all he was doing. I didn't know he was actually going to sing the title oh, track. I didn't know he did that. Yeah, he did. He did the yeah. "America the Beautiful." Yeah, and then America he came the Beautiful, back and did the the title track. Yeah, yeah. this is his Damn, second SummerSlam title track. Yeah, mm-hmm. so he's got that. He's got the Raw appearance. He's got the in ring segment with. Uh, he's like he might get into the WWE. He's, he's got to be he's a first ballot. He's the first. He's the first. First. They put Pete Rose in there. Yeah, all he did was get choke slammed by Kane. Like, yep. He, Jelly's got to be Jelly's, Yeah, Hall he's first ballot Hall of Famer all the way. And I mean, gotta, it was in, in every break that they went to, they were playing a Jelly song. Absolutely. Every break. They, in between, they did Liar, and, and they also did the, the title track. And yeah. the uh, I think they played the song from Twisters, too, in there. Some, That's one of the songs for SummerSlam. Oh, okay. okay. Oh, dude, yeah. That, yeah. He's got two songs on that soundtrack that are killer. Yeah. I, I, mean, that's, I, I went and saw Twisters in the theater, and sitting there in the theater, and it's like, holy shit, that's freaking Jelly in the middle of... A freaking movie, yep. Twisters here. We're watching Twisters, and there's a Jelly song playing. Wow! Yeah. And then the end credits are running. And it's a Jelly song. It's unbelievable. <laughs> got to be a WWE Hall of Famer. We yeah, oh, first sure. ballot over the top. Which Ad and Tony needs to broadcast live from the WWE Hall of Fame. Let's no, put it's it happening. Into, let's I'm calling it when we it. get ma- when we get Mania here in Nashville. When we get, they got to put stadium. Jelly in then. That's yeah, gotta, it's happening because happen. we're, we're what we're probably two years out from the new stadium oh, yeah. being built. So we're maybe three years out from a Mania. We're, we're manifesting All this. we're needing now is for Jelly to host WrestleMania one year, and we're good to go. Yeah. Yep. It's got to happen. Up. Well, I got, I got one more. Yep. I got one more. Uh, this is a newer one. And I was a big I, ring of honor that at this time in 2016, 2017, when Adam Cole made the jump over from ring of honor and New Japan and all that stuff over to the WWE yep. and hit uh, McIntyre with the 
with the super kick, that was a game changer for me. Yeah. Leaving the Bullet Club, uh, leaving the Young Bucks and all that stuff to come over to the WWE was a huge step for him. Adam Cole's another underappreciated, mm-hmm. underutilized. He's he's great. He's just undersized. I, he, he comes I, up a little short sometimes. That, I can say that because I'm vertically, <laughs> I'm vertically challenged too. But I just <laughs> he's one that I, I he, it's not very believable to, to see him as a world champ. Right. Fans love him though. Fans, love, yeah, he's, a, he's love great. Him. Yeah, his his music is one that encourages crowd participation and all Bingo. that stuff. Yeah, he's great. Yep. So, so he's over big time. I got one more also, and this is a big one. It wasn't great at the time, but Steve Austin joining WWE, coming out as the ringmaster, ringmaster. and getting the yep. the million dollar championship, yep. and being on Brother Love show, and he actually had the he told everyone to like reach their hand out and he said that he got that from he was watching he was watching uh preachers on tv joe and, austin yeah got, <laughs> got that idea from them would you reach out and touch me yep <laughs> yeah, so. I love well didn't, do, didn't dusty do that too yeah in a promo yeah and so your hand is touching my hand <laughs> You know, there were so many guys. Like, if you look at the names we mentioned, like Taker, we mentioned Kane, we mentioned, uh, you know, Mankind, Jericho, Jericho. Anytime they debuted somewhere else, it was a big deal. Like, look at all the guys who kind of had a hiccup in ECW. Mm-hmm. Austin being one of them. Yeah. You know, like Joey Styles with like, hey, you're stone, you're, you're you're stunning, Steve Austin. He goes, well, that's where you're wrong. And he goes into the Hogan type promo. He said, because I didn't have what it takes to get it done in the WCW. Like, their debuts, every anywhere they went was a big deal. Yeah. And Austin is no exception. ECW Austin was great, but WWE Austin couldn't figure it out, but it took him a minute. Mm-hmm. And then finally he turned into one of the biggest stars of all time. Yeah, once to get on that mic. That's it. Got on that hot mic. Yep. Bingo. <laughs> there we go. Episode 74. Shout yeah, out to man. the sponsors. Shout out to Revolution One Media. Shout out to Trouble Spirit. Shout out to all the wrestlers. And, All of them. Um, y'all be sure to hit the subscribe button, man. We're on the way to 900 subscribers. Nice. We're getting closer and closer. Almost 100 episodes. Absolutely. I mean, it's cre- we're 26 episodes away from 100. Mm-hmm. And, and, start, insane and started. And here's the, the crazy thing about it. We're almost at 1,000 uh, subscribers, but we started every started the page over completely. Yeah. So, like, yeah. to start over and to be here with less than 100, almost less than 100. It's, yeah, we're getting great, there. So. Getting yeah. there slowly but surely. Oh uh, yeah, guys! Y'all be here, uh, sure to hit the subscribe button, and we'll uh, we'll catch y'all next week, man. Boom! We out this motherfucker! Bow. <laughs>